Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. So I'm here in Anne Orlando, as you might recognize. And the reason I'm here is actually two... Well, it's twofold. First, we have to buy some upgrade materials from the large blacksmith. Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to give him my crystal ember. Remember, I picked that up in the Duke's archives. So now we can make some crystal weapons, which, if you recall in that episode, I explained they have 10% of their durability, but usually a much larger attack rating, or at least much larger damage. Now... Uh, we are going to purchase some large titanite shards. I think I only need three of them for now. Large titanite shards, obviously, to put a standard weapon from plus five to plus ten reinforcement. So we're going to reinforce our Uchigatana here. Oh, actually, I only needed two more of them. Okay. So now we have Uchigatana plus ten. Now we're going to modify it into a... Ooh, crystal Uchigatana is tempting. But instead, I'm going to do lightning Uchigatana. You can see how important this is. Uchigatana plus 10, 180 attack rating. Uchigatana plus, or lightning Uchigatana, 180 attack plus 180 lightning damage. So obviously we're going to upgrade it to that, which is going to be good for us. I suppose we could also, no, we can't make anything else. Let's go back to our Uchigatana in here, and we can use our Titanite chunks to upgrade it. Looks like we're going to be able to get to Uchigatana plus 2. Sadly, no more Titanite chunks, but that's okay. This will be a good weapon for us. Going into the next area. So first, let's equip it. Always found it convenient how close it was to my uh, Quaylog's Fury Sword. Then actually we're going to use a Homeward Bone. Because I don't believe I've rested at a bonfire since Firelink Shrine. But at the very least, this will take me back to a bonfire so I can warp to Firelink Shrine. Or I don't even want to warp to Firelink Shrine. I want to warp to um, Quaylog's Domain. Because we're going to do battle with Ceaseless Discharge, who you will meet. And uh, I should preface this, actually, by saying that Ceaseless Discharge is one of the more difficult bosses in the game for me. I tend to do pretty poorly. Wouldn't be surprised if I died once or twice. But the boss fight is very, very close to the bonfire, so it's not a big problem. Let's go to Daughter of Chaos, which is the Quaylog's Domain bonfire. Hopefully they're not going to be pissed off that I changed Covenant on them like five times. I was only in your covenant so you could give me Great Chaos Fireball. I don't know why this sounds bad to you. Anyway. Uh, the other thing about Demon Ruins. Actually, if you're, you're ranking the areas, uh, the late game areas. So we've got Duke's Archives, which we did, obviously. New Londo Ruins. Demon Ruins and Lost Isolith. And what was the other one? I always forget one of them. Um, uh, Catacombs and Tomb of the Giants. Demon Ruins is actually one of my favorites, if only because it feels, the environment feels like pretty dramatic. Let's put it that way. So as we exit here, you can get a feel for that sense of drama. As we walk through this spider hole, I don't know if that's the industry term for it, and just end up in fucking lava city here. Let's light this bonfire and rest at it. Again, 107,000 souls. It would be nice to, uh... Oh, you know what? First, let's kindle it. Even though we're already at 10, uh, 10, uh, Estus Flasks. It'll be nice in case I die. That I won't have to pop a humanity or go back to my bloodstain in order to get some humanity to kindle it and get to 10 for the next opportunity. Um, totally forgot what I was gonna say, but I really like how the colors pop here. I hope that comes out in the video. My touch, or not my touch screen, on my, uh, on my TV it works pretty well. So these guys are similar to the uh, Daughters of Chaos egg-headed guy. I can't believe I took damage for that. Should have just taken the long way around. But those guys are non-aggressive for you, at least the first time uh, that you come through. I believe they will all get aggressive if you attack one of them. And they have this attack where they actually shoot basically worms, or what kind of looks to me to be like enormous maggots out of the eggs on their back, and it can take you by surprise, and you can actually get infected by them as well. Which is actually what you want to do sometimes, uh, as I understand it anyway, to be uh, to rank up in that covenant. Uh, no, is that true? Maybe it's just to fit in with that covenant. I know all the pressure on kids these days is to be cool. Now, I should note, we're, we're going to get a glimpse of Ceaseless Discharge here in a second. Uh, there's a very easy way to beat Ceaseless Discharge. Because he chases you and apparently he just falls into a pit and then you can slash his hand and it'll be like Hans Gruber in Die Hard. There's Ceaseless Discharge right there. But uh, I can never seem to get it to work and I usually just get killed. Let me check my ring equipment right now. Obviously he is non-aggressive. Just at the start. 
but he will get aggressive in a second. So I have Havels and Ring of Favor and Protection. Okay, that's that's a good uh, setup right now. I could have the Flame Stone Plate Ring, but I prefer to have probably the faster moving speed from my weapons and armor right now. Okay, so he is going to get aggressive in a second here. Trap ahead. That is technically true. Enjoy your plaza your positive rating. So we're going to get a good set of armor here. This is the Gold Hem set, which is actually great for uh, fire resistance. And I am probably going to die in about two seconds, apparently. Heal up and get out of there. Just run. <laughs> okay, so Ceaseless Discharge has one attack, which I'm going to try to get him or it to do over and over and over. And it's actually that one. Right there. Now, the way to do this... This is actually, this is pretty difficult without sound. I have to watch his, uh, his cues. Which I think that was one right there. Yes, it was. Okay, let's come back here and chop him up. And this is exactly how I want this fight to go. I'm not going to worry about the, the gimmicky way to beat him. The way I'm going to avoid this attack is essentially just by running full sprint. And then trying to roll just before it lands. It puts me, like, a great distance away from the actual tentacle itself. But it's also the safest, because you saw, like, every time I get hit by this attack, it does a staggering amount of damage. And I got really lucky to avoid the fire on that one, even though I almost walked into it after. Now, don't get cocky. I mean, this has been a good, uh, good fight so far for me. Things can change quickly. Again, that one very nearly got me. That wouldn't one-shot me, but it would probably two-shot me. I would have to use this opportunity to heal as opposed to actually attacking. Going pretty well so far. Oh, here it comes. Oh, God. Get up to full speed. Again, barely made it out. This has been by far the best I have ever done against Ceaseless Discharge. Normally, I suck against this guy. I wish I could get the gimmick to work. Because, like, I see... Oh, God. I see videos of it, and uh, it looks like a lot of fun. Looks like people are having a good time fighting Ceaseless Discharge. Where, for me, Ce Ceaseless Discharge is always me shitting my pants over and over and over, just trying to roll out of the way of this attack. I don't like that he's moving position. Okay, here we go. That's his attack animation. And that's me getting burned to a crisp. Maybe it'd be better if I just tried to tank him right here. If I can get two hits in each time, eh, it's probably not enough. His attack animation rolled out of the way. Oh, lucky me. Come back in here. We can probably get about 600 damage in here. 495, that's okay. It's the attack animation again. Roll! Oh, man, it's always so close. I should probably heal at some point just to make sure that I don't get one-shotted by him. There's the attack animation. Go, go, go! Alright. Succeeded with a plum here. And that's actually one of the trends of this Let's Play that I did not expect. <clears throat> is that I do a lot better against the bosses during the Let's Play than I do uh, on my own when I'm playing on my own. So maybe the pressure is a good thing. So it turns out all of that magma was actually produced by Ceaseless Discharge. Now it might be good for us actually to equip our Gold Hemmed set. Again, this has higher fire resistance, if I recall. And it actually looks pretty badass. It makes you look like one of the Nazgul from Lord of the Rings or something. I am positive I'm not the first person to make that comparison. As you can see right there. Um, actually, let's just check our equipment really quickly. Let's do it this way, because I want to look at the properties of it. Okay, let's look at Gold Hand, Black Cloak, Toggle Display, Fire Defense, 58. Yeah, that's, that's quite high. Uh, our Physical Defense is going to be a little bit lower. But that's alright. I don't want to take damage here anyway. Or I don't want to take hits here anyway. Could use a Homeward Bone to get back to that bonfire. And in fact, probably should use a Homeward Bone to get back to that bonfire. Just to save time. But instead, let's run it, because I'm getting off a little bit of that adrenaline that I had during that Ceaseless Discharge fight. I'm being a little bit facetious, of course, but really, that Ceaseless Discharge fight uh, was kind of a sticking point for me the first time I played through the game. I got stuck there for a long time. I think I probably was a little bit lower level and had poorer weapons than I did this time, because normally, like, well, the first time I played through the game, I still had the Drake Sword at this point, and I was probably trying to do this right after Quaylog's Domain. I was probably like, oh, I've defeated Quaylog, and I just opened up this new area. Let's go to it, because obviously, this game is super linear, right? That's sarcasm. 
naturally. Now, come up here. We'll go back to our kindled bonfire. Which will give us four extra Estus flasks. It's actually not a long trip to go to our next bonfire. So we should be able to get there fairly quickly. I, I should say it's not always a long trip to get to our next bonfire. <clears throat> what you could do is... Well, I'll explain that in a second. But essentially... The Demon Ruins are the area of the game where some previous bosses actually become normal enemies. So if you don't feel like you've made much progress or like the enemies aren't getting much more difficult, you are absolutely incorrect. Not sure if you can see... <clears throat> Pardon me, just clearing my throat. <clears> throat. Sounds like I'm offended by Dark Souls. Or like they're talking about me behind my back and I'm trying to... <clears throat> Excuse me! I'm right here! Anyway. You can probably see those guys now. They are Taurus Demons, so those are obviously the first boss that we fought in the game. There are some items over there, but I don't want to risk getting them until I get a ring that actually allows me to walk on lava, which will allow me to fight them much more easily. And then just slightly more in the distance here is a Capra Demon. So, this is obviously the boss from the Lower Undeadburg. Got our soul of a proud knight here. Now the good news is, Capra Demon minus the dogs is not that difficult. The bad news is, I mean, he's still, it's not like fighting a hollow, let's put it that way. Should be able to kill him in, I don't know, four or five hits. And which is good, because we will be running across a lot of them. This is a pretty bad area for Capra Demon to be, by the way, because Capra Demon is, at least uh, the lower undead bird Capra Demon, is weak to fire. And this is a pretty, you know, fire infested area. Now because we are human, I believe we will be getting an NPC invasion fairly soon. An NPC invader called Kirk, who actually will show up probably a few times in this Let's Play. First time you get him is normally the Depths. But since I skipped the Depths, we don't have to deal with that. Instead, we're just going to fight him on this staircase right here. And as I walk down, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, we just saw an auto-saving in the corner, so he's probably invading any second now. One easy way to tell is... Uh, there we go. I was going to say, one easy way to tell is to take out something like a red-eye orb and see when you can actually use it. So this fight sucks because you have to fight him on a staircase that is quite narrow. But that's okay. Kirk in, uh, inflicts us with bleeding. So as long as we can stay away from that. Okay, he's uh, glitched out. What's up, buddy? That sucks for you. Like, really badly. Well, thanks for the humanity anyway. So he'll give us one humanity. And 27,000 souls. Pretty damn good. Eventually we can get Kirk's armor and shield. Uh, but we might have to fight him in the depths for that to happen. Obviously it's a fairly easy fight, as you can see from the fact that he just sort of stood there. That's actually the first time I've ever seen that happen. Yeah, more Capra Demons. Is there a way we can probably take out more than one of these at once? Because I don't want to get them super aggroed. Let's take out Great Chaos Fireball. Oh god! It was so close to getting out. Here we go. This should... Uh, it does a pretty good amount of damage. Staggers him as well, which is important. Not doing so well during this fight. That's okay. He's dead now. Heal up. Uh, I would prefer to fight this guy melee and then deal with the other Capra Demons with my Pyromancy. So get over here. Do a two-swing, please. Thank you. Should be able to stagger him. Oh, even better. We'll just two-hand our weapon and stun-lock him to death, essentially. Now we got these two guys. Let's go back to Great Chaos Fireball. They see me, but they don't see him aggroed yet. Right, that'll basically kill that one. One more hit will do it. If I could actually hit him. There we go. Probably use some fire orbs on this guy over here. We do have a bonfire, like, extremely close, so I don't have to worry too much about using all my pyromancy right now. Get on the high ground. That's how you know it's over, Anakin. Two of these will be enough, I expect. Yes, indeed. And then one more. Who we should be able to take out just with melee. Either that or I am terrible at this game. I know some people who would agree with the latter. And so do you, probably. Hmm, where to from here? I thought there was a soul consumable item up here, but I guess I am indeed mistaken. Now we're going to be introduced to a new enemy, which is this kind of like dragon statue here. This will breathe fire, which is pretty annoying considering, well my fire resistance is pretty good, but my shield doesn't block a lot of fire damage, so I won't be able to murder that 
uh, just by blocking in front of it and then attacking when there's an open spot, which is pretty much how I've taken out almost every other enemy in the game so far. Oh my god. Okay. That was a nice try. The good thing about these guys is that they're relatively weak and they won't attack if you're attacking them. So you can pretty much just go to town on them. Now we do have this little centipede type thing sticking out of the wall here. Not sure how well pyromancy works on these guys. I don't think I've ever used it on them before. Usually I, I would have like a dragon slayer bow right now and just pull it out and go to town on them. But I forgot to pick out the dragon slayer bow. Which is okay. I'll get that... Uh, Projectile damage from elsewhere. Okay, finally, it, no, it didn't die. I just did a thrash. I just made it angry. Okay, lightning Uchigatana should be able to cut into them fairly well. Excellent. So we do have our bonfire here. I'll rest at this. We may even get another boss fight in this video, which is crazy. Hey, what's up, guy in Mask of the Father and Havel's armor with the blood shield? I could totally invade your ass right now. I'm not gonna, though. Let's kindle this one, because again, we do have a boss fight coming up fairly shortly, which I will probably want 10 Estus Flasks for. Even though it's a fairly easy boss fight, it's very similar to the Stray Demon boss fight that we just saw, actually. In fact, so confusing that I- or so similar that I often get them confused. Plus rate that needs humanity message. Always trying to be a nice guy. Watch out for these dragon butts. Where are the... There's one that always drops down on me from above and scares the shit out of me. Okay, there's one. This might be the guy that I was thinking of. Cut him up. Extra 300 souls. Largely useless. Come at me. Come at me. Now if I give them both to fire at the same time... There we go. Okay. Free hits, essentially. Didn't catch on as much as the free hugs movement, which is sad, you know, because I think people should learn how to take a punch. Again, three hits or four hits will be enough to take this guy out. And then his buddy's behind me. Whoa, almost got me there. Now, you may think I would copped out by not fighting those Taurus demons at the start of the Demon Ruins. But, I'm gonna have to fight this guy anyway. In fact, there might actually be two... No, I have to fight one Taurus, one Capra. That's fine. Remember, the Taurus Demon is actually weak to lightning, so this is a pretty good weapon to have to take him out. I'm just gonna try to chop his dick off. He's still kind of difficult, though, to be honest with you. Like, uh, you'd expect him to be easier. Oh, I stunned him very well there. Two-handing is working superbly. You'd expect him to be much easier, considering, oh, this is the first boss. I fought him back in Undeadburg. Well, not 100% true. Okay, I hate this centipede guy. And I think more centipedes pop out of the ground, maybe. We're just going to run right past him. He has this vomit that causes me to like lose all durability in my weapon, which I don't want to deal with right now. So we're going to instead maybe aggro Capra. Nah, we'll worry about these dragon butts first. I know I call them dragon butts, which is a name that other people use for a different enemy that we'll see fairly, fairly shortly. I apologize for the confusion there. These guys don't look like butts at all. There's almost, almost no resemblance. But it's force of habit. It's hard to break out of that sometimes. Alright. Bring it on, Capra. Should stun you. And then just kill you. Wow, this is almost as easy as the dragon butts. I gotta stop calling them that. Now, it's worth noting there is a Chaos Ember. I believe it's the Chaos Ember. Which is down here if we want to... Well, you can just see it over there by the archway. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to get to, so I'll probably save that for a little bit later. Just because we do have to deal with a ton of those centipede bullshit guys, and I don't want to have to, you know, repair my weapon right now. Hopefully durability is still fairly high on this Uchi Katana, considering I just got it. Uh, but let's go through the fog wall, which will end with us fighting a boss, I believe. I'm pretty sure. There's so many bosses in this area, it's kind of confusing. Okay, it's Demon Fire Sage. Uh, kind of a tricky boss, depending on your fire resistance, and actually your physical resistance. As you can see, he has the same attack as the, uh, Stray Demon there. And we're gonna use pretty much the same strategy as the Stray Demon. We're gonna chop him up, try to avoid his AoE attacks. And, uh, you know, even the moveset that he has is fairly similar. They're obviously, you know, distant cousins. This is, uh, an AoE fire attack, which will probably hit me here. Oh, no. And he's extremely similar to the Stray Demon. I, I never noticed that before. Uh, well, never. I've noticed it before, but I've never noticed exactly how similar. It looks so far, he's done like exactly the same move set. I don't want him to be in that corner. If I have to heal because I get hit here, so be it. 
Oh, that's gonna hurt. That hurt a lot. <laughs> Probably should not have taken the time to heal there. Oh, yeah. Why not? Let's do it again. <laughs> Funny joke. Funny joke, guy. Alright, now get behind him. Start going to town on him. I really don't want him to be in that corner. I may have to crunch a humanity here unless I can get far enough away that he can't hit me. Look at that reach. It's crazy. That's a new attack. Okay, I'll back up for the AoE attack. Try to avoid getting smushed there. What is that weapon anyway? It's like an axe. Hard to tell. It's like a, a, a grant almost. I don't know. I'm not good on my medieval weaponry. In fact, everything I know about medieval weaponry I've learned from Dark Souls essentially. What is this attack? It's AoE fire attack. Okay. Again, once you get the patterns of the bosses down, they can sometimes be some of the easier enemies in the game. Maybe not some of the easier enemies, some of the easier encounters. I would rather fight, for example, uh, Demon Fire Sage than fight like 10 Taurus Demons at once. This guy's almost dead. I don't know that I have ever died to this boss. Which is pretty crazy, actually, when you consider the difficulty curve in uh, Dark Souls at large. Or the difficulty level. I suppose I should say. So let's see what we get from him. Demon's Catalyst and Humanity. Cool. We do have another bonfire very close, so I won't end the episode just yet. We might as well get to that bonfire. Demon Ruins and Lost Isolith are essentially just boss fight after boss fight after boss fight after boss fight. So you can see we can go up here. Which is actually where we will have to go to open up a shortcut to the Chaos Servants Covenant. No, get out of there. Ooh, nice tactical roll, Nazgul. You've been practicing. Uh, and they do apparently get a little bit stronger here because I couldn't kill that one in three hits. I may have made a mistake there as well. Maybe they just got a little bit of an HP buff. Who knows? First, we're going to come down here. Let's see, we're at 22 minutes. I don't know. Light this bonfire up. I don't even have the humanity to kindle it, which means I am actually going to use... Wow, 18 humanity. Remember earlier in this Let's Play when I accidentally got drunk and used all my humanity invading? Now, I seem to be in a fairly good situation. Let's uh, kindle this bonfire. Kindle this bad boy, I should say. <clears throat> you know what? Let's push it. Let's make this a little bit of a longer episode. We'll probably get over half an hour here because the next boss is so, 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 so close. Try humanity. Good advice. So now that we've kindled that bonfire, I should probably put myself on Estus, not uh, Prism Stones. Those are probably not going to be that useless, or not that useful for us here. And we'll take this tree down, and there should be a summon sign which will allow us to summon Solaire for this next encounter. Which is probably, sadly, going to be the last time we will run into Solaire. Uh, at least as a summonable warrior. So we'll summon him. And, you know, <laughs> I hate to say it because Solaire is, is pretty strong in the game when he gets hits in. But during this fight, he's largely useless. He just kind of tends to stand there and watch me destroy the boss. Which I shouldn't necessarily say, because I may actually get killed during this boss fight. Who knows? So we'll get Solaire, if he can get out of that tree root. Solaire, yeah, there you go. Yeah, go around. That's probably a better decision. Need knights? Okay, well, I mean, Solaire is right there. You can just summon him in the future. Get up against this fog wall. And we will have another boss fight. A three boss fight video. <clears throat> Alright, so this is Centipede Demon. Centipede Demon has the potential to be kind of a pain in the ass, because it's sort of difficult to get him close enough to actually fight. Except for this time, when it appears he's actually just going to rush right for us, which is nice. Uh, and probably try to murder Solaire right off the bat, which is a dick move, buddy. Solaire's already at, like, 80% health. There we go, this is how we get to him. Yeah, just please get closer. He's almost... Okay, this is the attack that we're going to be looking for more often. 
He's going to try to jump on us, and when he tries to jump on us, we're going to be able to get a lot of attacks in, provided that our stamina doesn't get, like, super depleted like it is right now. Does he have Solaire in his mouth? What the fuck is going on? I can't see anything! The camera! He's, like, standing on the archway. Okay, oh god, get out of the lava! Get out of the lava! Oh, oh god, don't roll into the lava! Okay, let him fight Solaire for a minute. We'll just block. Get out of the lava! Good god. This is the hardest time I've had fighting this guy. In a long time. Again, he'll just go to town on Solaire, which means we'll go to town on him. Nobody fucks up Solaire. Except me. Probably in like two videos. Uh, I forgot about that stomp attack, so we should really take an opportunity to heal shortly. How about right now? Solaire's tanking most of this damage for me. Now he does a jump, and then we'll move. And uh, normally, I would expect to get out of the way of that, but you can't always get what you want. Here comes the jump. Okay, now just... Solaire, just tank him, please. Just go to town. He should be dead by now. This fight is not going as well as it normally does for me. Despite the fact that it's, it's actually going okay, I mean... I'm not seemingly in any risk of death right now. This might even be it for him, in fact. Alright! What a successful video. Three... No-death boss encounters. So here we get the orange... Solaire, you can disappear now. I'm trying to have a conversation with the audience. There we go. Humanity, Homeward Bone, Orange Charred Ring... And, um, Sunlight Metal. We'll get rid of Havel's Ring, for now, and put on our Orange Charred Ring. This allows us to actually walk on the lava without taking staggering amounts of damage. Which is nice. So now we've essentially defeated the Demon Ruins. As you can see right here, I still take a little bit of damage. And it adds up, let's put it that way, but, uh... This will allow us to actually traverse the next area, otherwise there is pretty much no way we can survive unless we somehow got the ability to fly. Now we're going to reach a bonfire here. You can see our buddy Solar. Solar. MC Solar. Um, but I'm not going to talk to him just yet. I'm going to save that for the start of the next video. We'll just rest here. 225,000 souls really should do something with those, I guess. As always, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you next time.